sunk. I mean, any, anything, anything that, that, that you or I can find in someone's past, yesterday and backward in their life, by way of a failure, somebody could do exactly the same thing yeah. to me, to you, and to anybody. There, there is nobody who, given you know, sufficient investigation and, and looking into their, their past, something couldn't be discovered that would be quote unquote justification for writing them off as, as somebody that should not be taken into account anymore. I, I'm so glad we're having this specific conversation because what, what Jesus says right after he says, do not judge or you too will be judged. He says, for in the same way, yeah. right? Or in the old King James, with what measure you meet, it will mm -hmm. be measured back to you. In the same way that you judge others, you will be judged. Here it is. And with what measure you use, it will be measured to you. There are, I think, a great many people, and I include myself in this, mm -hmm. at times in my life, who have caught somebody out. They've seen an inconsistency. Mm -hmm. They've spotted a hypocrisy. And they, we, imagine that in that moment, our ability to identify hypocrisy or wrong think or wrong actions, that, that, that is it. We've achieved some sort of paragon of moral virtue mm -hmm. and that this is not also something that could in other circumstances or other situations be applicable to us. Yeah, and it's Jesus, dangerous. It's exactly right. And Jesus says, you have to be very careful how you treat others because the way that you mm -hmm. measure, the way that you conduct yourself, yeah. it's, it's going to come back on you. Yeah, yeah. Not in a vindictive way, but just in a, yeah. Jesus here is speaking about the nature of reality. He is. He's not, he's not saying, judge not that you be not judged, in the sense of, hey, if you're judgmental and, and harsh and condemnatory, God is going to reflect not your ugly said. image back to you. He's going to be judgmental, condemnatory, and harsh to you if you're that way. No, Jesus is saying that, that judgment and condemnation toward others produces... A, 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 a situation in which I will not be able to believe in God's mercy for me Correct. when I need it. And when do I need it? Well, I need it now, but I may not be aware of the fact that I need it now. I may, I may feel really good about myself because, you know, I, I, I have some kind of illusion of moral high ground. Nobody in the world has any moral high ground. And We've that already is, seen that we're all yeah, hungry and, that and is, thirsting yeah, for Yeah, that's not to say, David, it's not to say we need to we need to acknowledge this and not just acknowledge it but but really nail this down what jesus is not saying what we're not saying is be blind to wrong or blind to evil or blind you know, to you, injustice you should be able to look at an, an act of injustice an act of sin an act of evil and call it what it is correct and this is a legitimate discernment i mean where would the world be if we were all just uh, walking around completely blind to the difference between right and wrong. So there's a, the, as we said at the beginning, there's an, a legitimate kind of judging. Jesus said, um, by their fruits, you will know them. Well, that means that you are. Hey, can you hear me guys? Yes. Can you hear us? Yeah, I didn't, I don't understand it. This is just crazy. Okay. Okay, so I'm Next. sorry, where, where were they? Did you do all of the preliminaries? Sorry. Yeah, we had prayer. We talked a little bit. Uh, Mac, yeah. Uh, do you need an exorcism over your your computer? <laughs> I spent two hours on the phone today with HP on my printer, and, oh, now, my, and now my speakers aren't working. I, I just uh, I don't understand it. So um, I, I was concerned about the, the prayer list. Did you did you guys have a chance to go through? No, uh, we we didn't approach that. Okay. You want to talk mm -hmm. about that, and then. Uh, Okay, well, I guess we, we can do it at the end. Okay. All right. how, how, how far did you did we get on the video? Because I, did he, did he get to the part yet where, um, where he talks about passing judgment, judging is passing judgment? Yeah, we're, we're at 18. Okay, we let's go ahead and roll it then. And uh, okay. I, I, I wanted to stop it to ask a couple of questions, but obviously, uh, I missed the intro. Go ahead. Are aware you're discerning. I mean, a synonym for the word judge is discern. If I say or, to you, or evaluate. Yeah, evaluate. If I say to you, hey, I know a lady named Debbie. She has really good 
judgment. I mean, she has good discernment, not that she's judgmental. So there's a legitimate judging in which we see a thing for what it is, yep. call it what it is, maybe even call somebody to repentance, maybe even call them to account. Correct. But you can, you can actually call someone to account and at the same time hold out hope, hold out Beautiful. You know, the possibility of change, reform, transformation. But without that, we're all sunk. And that's what yep. Jesus is saying. If you operate on a mm -hmm. narrow, judgmental, condemnatory premise, well, where does that leave any of us? It's, All right, Jack, that, that's good. Can you pause it there? On you at some point. Correct. Maybe okay, that yeah. that was kind of where, I, thank you, Jack, but where I okay. wanted to stop it. Okay. Um, so what is the, I, I'm trying to figure out what's the difference in what he called calling, not calling people out, but if you see something, uh, anybody got a Bible? That, can you can you look up Galatians six one? And Betty, you always have a, a quick read. Uh, Luke seventeen three. I don't even uh, have my Bible with me here, Matt. You don't. Kirk, oh, no. you got your Bible. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody, somebody, do Luke seventeen three and somebody six one, please. Okay, yeah, I've got Galatians 6, 1. Yeah, what brethren, does it say? It says, brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. Okay, so how, how does that fit with what we're talking about in, in the Sermon on the Mount where it says, don't judge people? And yet, this text is saying, you who are spiritual, now how, how do you know who that is? I, I mean, do we have a right to call people out? Well, I think it's talking about being judgmental. That's different from judging um, right and wrong. Is that what uh, you're- I, I think uh, um, um, we have to we try to, I, I don't know if it means the same thing, but I'm hoping it does, or my illustration is, uh, gone. Uh, a judge um, does not um, is not the one that. Um, well, I should say he is. A judge is the one who who sets a punishment for something. I mean, that's his job to mete out the punishment, to listen to both sides and lead out. That's what we're not supposed to do because we have no business punishing someone because we're not in the position to, to mete out punishment to other people. So a judge exercises punishment, but judgmental, it means what? Well, that's probably, that's probably a, a let's say, he was using the word discernment. Yeah. So th this is what was catching me. And go ahead, who, ha who has 17.3? I did just a second ago. Okay. Okay. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. Okay. So there is counsel here to rebuke people. And I, I think sometimes we think that it is really our job to get people straight. I, you don't know how many people I've heard say, well, I got to go get them straight. They, they got that all wrong. And, and yet, you know, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is saying that we, we shouldn't do that. So how do we draw the line between judging, judge, being judgmental, rebuking? And then what, what Kurt just read, it says, those who are spiritual, that seems like a, a, lot, a lot of self-righteousness to me. Okay, I'm I'm spiritual enough to go and tell somebody else they're doing something wrong. Does, does that make any sense? Are you conflicted with that? Well, this is saying if your brother does something against you, not about you know other things. You know, I think you have to stand up for yourself. You can't just be a doormat. But if he trespasses against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, then forgive him. 
Uh, okay. I, I think later on in the video, they, they're going to kind of process this a little bit more. I just, before they did that, I wanted to, to see how you, how you guys felt about it. And then there was, there's another text um, that says, who are you? Romans 14, 4. Who are you to pass judgment on, this, uh, on the servant of another? Who are you to pass judgment? So there are those two words again, judge, being judgmental in, in passing judgment. That may, not mean, that may not mean the same thing. It, it may not. There's a whole bunch of verses, because I Googled it to see how many verses there were about judging and judgmental. And it all will come down, and we'll get to it at the end, but, but there's a key word that kind of brings it all together at, at the end. Uh, let, let's, Mac, Mac, you're making idiots of us by not by not telling us what you know already. <laughs> well, that would that would hamper the discussion. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know a whole lot. <laughs> let me let me just say one more thing before we go to the video. Uh, in in my way of thinking, when we become judgmental, we're not necessarily going out. Uh, if if I see somebody doing something that I know is absolutely wrong, I don't know their motive. You know, if I see them go into a bar, I don't know what their motive. Are they going in there to get drunk? Are they going in there to meet a, another person that they don't want anybody to know about? I don't have that ability. That's but, the word. That, that, that was, that was going to be the final, the final word. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but we, we have to be careful that we don't categorize people by the way we feel and so, say, well, you, that, that person I'm not going to associate with because I don't think they're a good person. All That's right, so not the right me, way to do it. Let, let, me, let me be real crazy. Okay. What if we see something at church that we don't like? Does that necessarily require, um, it, it, if we don't like it, does it mean that we're judging it? <laughs> Am I gonna get us in trouble? <laughs> I'm you don't just, like it? I'm trying, you mean if you... I'm trying to be practical because we all do it. Yeah. You, you know, I, I went I went to a church once and the, the, the topic for the day was righteousness by dress. Oh. <laughs> I kid you not. Oh. That was the title of the sermon. Oh. And so everybody who looked at someone else who wasn't <laughs> dressed the way that these folks said, they had already judged that they were going to hell. <laughs> oh my. And that's an extreme situation, but I kind of think that we form judgments in our mind when we don't like something that we see that's different from my taste. Now, so uh, is that judging? He used the word, what was it, Betty? Discernment? Discernment. Uh -huh. That's discernment yeah. uh and later in the video he's going to call it evaluating uh -huh. um so we we make a determination about something and then we have to decide whether or not is it right or wrong in our mind and everything I mean, like that, that you think is right or wrong may not be according to scripture it may just be a personal preference that's right and so right. then we start thinking though that he was wrong for doing that she was wrong for saying that that person was wrong for singing that way for coming in the church dressed that way you remember when steve got on somebody because the deacons told a guy who was who was bald-headed who wanted to wear a hat yeah uh you know we make these judgments about people in the context that they're wrong and in order to be right, you have to do it my way. So that's the foundation of what I'm, I'm trying to expose us to because I know in our own hearts, we all do it. And it's all, it ends up being judging based on personal preference. 
However, there is some discernment based on when I, I, I know that's, that's not right. And then at that point, do you rebuke? Do you go to the person? Do you do Matthew 18? So it this opened, when I listened to all of this, it opened this up for so much discussion that I don't know the real answer to. So let's let's hear how Ty and, and David handle it. Go ahead and, and finish it. Did somebody else want to say something first? No. Danny, your <laughs> your 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 picture is on my screen. <laughs> like All right, that Jack, tax go ahead and run over there. Okay. You may feel really good about yourself right in this moment because you've seen what's wrong there and you're calling it out. But man, oh man, what if a what if miraculously a a videotape of of everything that you mm. have ever done Mercy. was played across the night sky for the whole world to watch? I think you'd go silent. Suddenly, you wouldn't be as eager to point out somebody else's failures. No. And Jesus gets at this when he says, "Listen, you know, take the 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 beam, the two by four out of your own eye yeah, yeah. so that you can see clearly enough to properly deal with the failure of your brother, of your sister. There's a speck in their eye, but you have a beam in your eye and you need to remove that so that you can be merciful as you assess, as you see what you see, you know, that's wrong and I love you. That's mm. not good and I forgive you. you I believe in you. I believe in you. You shouldn't have done that but you're better than that in your potential. I read a, I read a, I love every syllable that you said there. And I, I read a tweet, oh, it's probably a week ago now, where a, a person had said that if every mistake we've ever made was written down, it would take forests of paper. Yeah. So, so because in this moment, in this circumstance, in this situation, I perceivedly occupy a, a place of moral high ground, um, it, it might be true. You might have done something wrong. Yeah. Maybe that was a wrong thing you said or did. Yeah. Obviously, society, civil society proceeds on the notion that we can distinguish between right and wrong yeah. and that we can administer appropriate punishments for wrong behavior. Yeah. Okay, yes and yes, but Ty, and this is crucial for our listeners, there is and there must be a distinction between judgment, what you're calling discernment or evaluation, and judgmentalism. Yeah, that's right. That's why we called this topic judge juggling judging yeah and if because and if you need to keep these yeah. straight in your mind yeah and if you're not sure um a sister precious elderly woman said to me years ago she said i'd rather be merciful than right now that's a little bit of an exaggeration for effect she's making a point the point she's making is is if i'm having a hard time figuring out uh, figuring something out with regards to you i need to err on the side of there's hope for David. There, there's transformation. God there's, is working with yeah, David. God is working with David. Uh, okay. So David's yeah, I, not dead yet. Yeah, David's not dead yet. And God is pursuing in every way, shape, and form David and, and me and everybody else in the world. And so I'd rather be merciful than right. What she meant by that was, mm, you know, the bottom line is that, that I need to hold out hope or you're not going to have anything to move forward into. I'll give you a good example of this in the Gospels. Remember when Jesus was at the Feast of Simon and uh, this woman comes in, Mary comes in and starts washing mm -hmm. the, the feet of Jesus with her hair, Yeah. right? And the sense in the room, and Simon sort of articulates this, yeah. uh, if he knew what kind of a woman this was, yeah. he wouldn't permit this. Right. So what, what Simon has done there is he believes he's occupying a place of moral high ground. Mm -hmm. He has seen who she is. He's made this very, you know, simple, facile evaluation of her. Mm -hmm. And he thinks he knows everything he needs to know. Yeah. But, but Jesus essentially says, and I'll sort of paraphrase Jesus here, she's in process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe you don't love this seemingly overly yeah. exaggerative, yeah, yeah. even semi-sensual way of, of, you know, lavishing mm -hmm. uh, 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 affection on me. She's done what she could. I love it. He actually says yeah. she's done what she could. Leave her alone. Leave her alone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so. Well, there's something else there. When, when, when Simon says, if, in his mind, if he knew what manner of woman this was, he wouldn't let her do this. 
The, the fact is he did know. Jesus did know what manner of woman she Great was, point. right? Great so, point. so he's not oblivious. He knows. And this is, this is the remarkable thing about Jesus and the gospel. Jesus does know and he still loves. He knows everything about David Asherick. He knows everything about Ty Gibson. He knows everything about every one of us. And yet he loves us. And if he didn't, we'd all be sunk. So the same, the same measure with which we measure or judge others is, is going to be measured back to us. We're going to experience in our own conscience whatever it is we're dealing out to others. Yeah, projection. So, so we've, noticed, uh, we've noted several times in our series that this book here uh, by Ellen White, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, is the very best commentary that either of us have ever come across on the Sermon on the Mount. Mm -hmm. We've each read it over and over mm -hmm. again. It's my... I said before, it's my favorite book that she ever wrote. And I do want to read, if it's all right, just a paragraph, uh, one now and maybe one a little bit later, about this very idea. Mm -hmm. She's commenting on this, this uh, passage here, Matthew chapter 7, verse 1, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. And she quotes it. She, uh, let me just back up here. She says, The people partook largely of the same spirit, intruding upon the province of conscience, and judging one another in matters that lay between the soul and God. Mm -hmm. It was in reference to this spirit and practice that Jesus said, judge not that you be not judged. That is, do not set yourself up as a standard. Do not make your opinions, your views of duty, your interpretations of scripture a criterion for others and in your heart condemn them if they do not come up to your ideal. Do not criticize others conjecturing as to their motives and passing judgment upon them. Mm -hmm. So there's several right, features yeah, of what she's yeah, saying here. Number one is setting yourself up as the ideal, which you are not. And the quote from Thoughts from the Mount of, not Thoughts, yeah, what is it? Yeah, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing fits with the quote from Desire of Ages, page 314. And then, let, me, let me share with, it's kind of like what he just read, but it's a, a little bit different take. Do not think yourself better than other men and set yourself up as their judge. Since you cannot discern, there's the, the word again, since you cannot discern motive, you are incapable of judging another. In criticizing him, you are passing sentence. And that there's that judging word, the courtroom, Betty, that you talked about. I, I like that illustration. In criticizing him, you are passing a sentence upon yourself for you show that you are a participant with satan that, that oh, wow. really got me wow. a participant with satan the accuser of the brethren the lord says examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith prove your own selves this is our work if we would judge ourselves we should not be judged kind of similar to the passage in Thoughts for the Mount of Blessing. But there's that whole idea again about passing judgment. And, and, and what was the word you used, Betty? I keep forgetting it. Um, passing a sentence. A judge, a judge uh, has a sentence. So our, our question, my question is, if we were to be in that position, what kind of sentence would we give to someone who we don't agree with? And that's what being a judge is all about and why it says, don't judge. In that same video, that uh, in the same illustration that, that David was talking about when Mary came in to wash Jesus' feet, a scene before that in, in the film, Jesus of Nazareth, one of the... Um, one of the Pharisees stands up and he says, well, this gives me a, it gives me a, a, a way to decide uh, and to judge this person whether or not he's right or wrong. And then Jesus says to him, you should not judge. Uh, and, and so we, we spend a lot of time focusing on things that have to do with behavior. And because the behavior uh, is in front of us, we make a determination, an evaluation, a discernment, and we form a conclusion. And some of us sometimes will pass sentence, you know, on people in, in our own hearts and in, in our own minds. A anyway, it, it's a thrilling discussion. <laughs> I just, now I have another crazy question. What does 
any of this have to do with our salvation? Mm. Does anybody want to take that one on? Well, it reveals what kind of person we really are, regardless of what we look like on the outside to other people, just sanctimonious and holy. It, it shows what's, what's in our hearts when we do something like that, even if we don't say anything to the other person, we yes. think it. Yes, yes. So we, we can really be messing up ourselves by just thinking it. We don't, we don't have to act it out. Right. We, can, we can just think it. And sometimes we spend so much time trying to fix things, fix other people, and it has nothing to do with whether or not I'm I'm right with God and I'm gonna and gonna be saved. And yet we spend a lot of time on it. And that's why a lot of the young people say they left because we were so focused on judging them on the do's and the don'ts. And I, we've all been there. We've all been guilty of that. And and that's why this Sermon on the Mount is so powerful, because it takes us to another level of understanding about what the character of God is, what Jesus was trying to teach. And he was with his disciples for what, three years, and they still didn't get it until the, until the, up, until the upper room. Uh, so what do we learn from this? I, I don't want to run out of time, but what, what do we learn so far from this, this passage uh, uh, in chapter 7, verses 1 through 5? Any takeaways? Matt, I think you you had a good one right there. That that was a takeaway for me. That even if we don't express it, if, if we think it, yeah, uh, something's wrong with that. Matt, Matt, can I throw a monkey wrench in here? Another one? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped the video and I I found where it is, so it's my okay. favorite. But. Uh, what if you are in a position where you are required to judge others? What about? Yeah. You can only judge them on what you see and hear. You don't know what's inside of them. That was the hardest thing for me when I was you know, I, I had sometimes staffs of 20 or more, and I was supposed to do evaluations on each one of them. Uh, I think the, the biggest thing for me was to have a relationship with those people that I needed to do that. Mm -hmm. And then from that, I tried my very best. And, and I, I know my son in Idaho is having to go through that because he's in a position of authority and he has to judge people all the time and he says that's the hardest thing for him to do to make a and, determination yeah and, and it from my way of thinking that should be hard for you to do because you need to get more involved with them to try to understand what are their strong points and what are their weak points and how can you help them to develop their strong points very good anybody else is, is Maynard on tonight no He's not, oh, shoot, I wanted to, because he would know what I'm talking about. We, we had a, um, there was an individual who was a director when both, when Maynard and I were at Kettering, we were kids, you know, <laughs> so to speak, in our, in our uh, professional. She literally would walk around with a tape measure. Oh. And, um, and it, the, the funny thing about it is it really wasn't her job. <laughs> <laughs> what, she, she, what was she measuring? <clears throat> what was she, she was measuring? measuring the lengths of the skirts of any <laughs> any girl, any woman who <clears throat> came to work. And uh, I, for the life of me, I can still see it just as, as if it was yesterday. And I, I know Maynard would know who, I, who I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh. some people think you know, they want to be in that role, Jack, whereas I know. Yeah. don't want to be in that role. Yeah. And that tells me if, if I have a need, 
to judge somebody, what does that say about me? <clears throat> You're insecure. You're insecure in Absolutely. my own relationship. Yes. And, yeah. and that, was, that was why I asked the question, what does this have to do with our, with our salvation? Is judging others going to be a problem for me and getting to know God better? Because it tells me that my focus is not on God. My focus is on looking at other people so I can elevate myself. In my own mind, I'm better than her. Or I'm better than him. Mm -hmm. And so we can form these judgments or evaluations or discernments about people for the, mo the benefit, which you said earlier, Jack, the, the motive is to elevate myself over someone else. And that's why Jesus made a big to do about it. And, and in my Bible, it just comes right out and says the title of this whole section is do not judge. And <clears throat> you go ahead and run it, Jack. Okay. We're not going to ever get to section nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't worry about getting to section nine. We can get there next time. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we don't have that much more time left. So, okay. See if I can do this without hitting the wrong thing couple years ago is titled Talking to Strangers. Mm -hmm. And in that book, Gladwell basically shows over and over again, it, it, through some pretty remarkable interactions, how people believe or we think we can assess somebody with just the simplest and most, you know, the, the most quickly ascertained clues and cues about them. Mm -hmm. And what Gladwell does in the book is to show we're basically always wrong. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Mm -hmm. But, but God does know yeah. and loves anyway. Right, right. Somebody, somebody uh, for example, somebody could be uh, cranky, in a bad mood, yeah. um, and, and another person is happy and bubbly and outgoing. Um, you could look at the one person and judge them harshly for being cranky and you know in a bad mood, uh, angry, mean spirited, yeah. or whatever, and, and impatient in a moment or whatever, but that person could be constituted in such a way biologically, mm. and have a history that makes them much more inclined that direction. Whereas this person is constituted in such a way that they're just kind of bubbly and happy, go lucky, and nothing really bothers them right, right? they're different so people. One, one isn't better than the other right mm. this individual who is inclined to impatience and crankiness could be exerting more vigilance over him or herself to be to be careful and resist temptation and that's as good as it gets for them, <laughs> right? And this that's person, the ceiling, huh? Yeah, and this, and this person, we can look at them and, and judge them, you know, as, as just a better person, but they're not putting forth any energy because nothing phases them. So who actually point. in that situation, Great point. who in that situation is, is actually more virtuous? The person who who's by, exercising more moral restraint yeah. or more moral control. Exactly. We, we don't. The answer is we don't. Know. We don't know. We can't figure it out, and so so it's a waste of energy to try to figure it out. You know, default mode is judge not. Ty, one of my favorite things about you, and there's a great many things that I love about you, and in, in the friendship that we've had over the years, decades at this point, is that that you. Are very, you're very consistent at giving people the benefit of the doubt. Like I've just seen you in numerous situations say, no, probably they're just acting that way. For and you just put a really positive. Sometimes I think, Ty, what are you talking about? Man, this guy, he's not being cool. He's like blowing the situation. Like, no, no, I think it could be. Right. And that's been actually very helpful to me over the years to see the grace and the kindness and the benefit of the doubt that you extend to people and it's it's not just a one off it's just a way you do you just do life that way and it's it's a blessing yeah. honestly to work with you well I, I appreciate that it's probably because um i don't want to be judged <laughs> <laughs> you're looking Myself. out for your own interest <laughs> i don't know i just i think that we don't really see the whole picture that's the bottom line that's the bottom line over and over again um through throughout the years i've come to know something 
about a person that I didn't previously know yes. that, that altered my previous opinion of, I'm like, oh, wow. It becomes if a I key known that, that unlocks a previous yeah, yeah, behavior that yeah. you were a little off put by, but now it makes sense. Yeah, you, you've read Seven Habits of Highly Effective yeah. People by Stephen Covey. Um, years ago, when I first read that book, I remember a story about a man on a subway with a couple of kids, yeah. and they're all going berserk, and the yeah, kids yeah, are yeah, bouncing yeah. off the walls and disturbing the other passengers. And 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 uh, Stephen Covey is telling the story about himself. He was just thinking, "What? This is a bad father. He has no control of his kids. Why can't he? Why doesn't he just Taking judgment, judgment, story, judgment, yeah. judgment? Right?" Stephen Covey, I think it was Stephen Covey, worked out you know, the, the, the courage to say, listen, get control of your kids. Your kids are disturbing. And the guy kind of snapped into reality and said, oh, you're right. I, I, yeah, their mom just died. Right. And we're coming from the hospital. And I think that's just the way they're processing. And Stephen Covey makes the point that in that moment, he just saw the guy and, a di and the kids totally differently. Because the whole now situation he, changed. Now he knew the circumstances that put them in the situation they were in and there was all the judgment was just drained out of him he was like compassion now took the place of condemnation i mean that's that's just the way it is david we just don't know why a person in any given yeah. situation is the way they are why they're doing what they're doing why they're not doing what they're not doing you may say that person's lazy when it could be they're insecure right. and so they're not lazy, they're just, they're, ju they're just not wanting to act for fear of failure. Well, these are to two totally different things, and that's just a simple example. Go, um, go ahead and stop it, Dad. Again, we're going to discover that we just... Uh, he, I, I use that story quite a bit um, in, in some of my training. And one of the points that, that is made in, in that story is that Covey said he went from wanting to spank these kids and call them out to wanting to do what? Not to give them a hug. Mm -hmm. So in, instead of wanting to punish them, he wanted to hug them because he now has a different picture. One of the things that, that I've learned <clears throat> um, as I've gone through a, a lot of this, uh, I, I had a good colleague, when I would come with a, an issue or if, if I was making a judgment about something, he would always ask this question, have you considered the other side of the story? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I had to really stop myself in my tracks and say, hmm. And that became, uh, and, and you may know who I'm talking about. I don't know how many of you all know Dr. Reeves, but I, I used to confide in him a lot. And he was such a good counselor. Mm -hmm. and, and when he threw that question at me, I had, to, I, I had to really stop myself and say, wow, maybe there is something different that I'm not considering. And so I'm making a judgment about something without having all of the facts not having all of the information. And I, I think we tend to do that sometimes because we don't see the bigger picture. And you kind of almost have to train yourself to say, okay, hold off. What could be happening here? You know, <laughs> I, mean, I think I told my Sabbath school class, class this story, but my, my dear wife is like that. And, you know, we, we lived in Maryland in DC for, for, for a while, right after we first got married. And on the way to the airport in, um, in DC, you have to go through the red light district. And the red light district where the ladies are hanging out on the corner and you go right down 14th street going to, uh, to Reagan airport. And here I am, a, a young married man saying, mm, 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 look, at, look at those women, why are they doing that? That, that they should be they should be put in jail and 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 you're not gonna believe it but <laughs> this was Chris's response. Chris said, "How do you know they're not just waiting for the bus?" <laughs> I, said, I said, "Well, I never thought of that, but I doubt it." <laughs> But 
I've had to learn over the years to look at the other side of the story. And maybe there's a lesson there about how we judge others. And it just, it, it, it shocked me and it stopped me from, from I'm, all, I'm always now trying to say, okay, have I considered the other person's point of view? Or have I looked at this uh, without forming my own conclusions before I even know the other side of the story? Anybody else? What what did you learn from this this section on judging? Before we, you know, have our, our prayer and things like that. Anybody? Anybody got something to to share that they've learned from reading this? You know, there's there's so many aspects of this that I hadn't thought of. What their discussion is is just opening up new avenues of thinking and uh the, probably the hardest thing for me is not to judge drivers <laughs> so my, my my wife has been very long suffering and uh, she finally has said stop it they don't stop count doing there. that <laughs> and uh so i i try very hard but i have a hard time with that because yeah. you know, uh, it, it's 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 something especially you know I've driven in LA I've driven in Chicago I've driven in New York nothing is like it is around Orlando yeah. and it yeah. uh, it just bothers me a lot so <clears throat> I I I see that I really need to think about the other person maybe they are rushing home because there's an emergency at home. Uh, maybe they didn't see me and really didn't mean to cut me off. <laughs> Some of those things. Well, that's it's interesting that you raise that point because in that same book, Covey gives that, ex that same experience as an example of how we need to be more proactive in our thinking. And he uses it, he says, we can choose our behavior. So instead of <clears throat> by, by, by imagining that that person is on their way to the hospital. And mm -hmm. I, I tell this story too, but you know, I, I won't, I'll spare you from going through it, but it's, um, it, it is something. And, and he said, suppose, even if it was just one out of 100 who had cut you off, Jack, suppose, <laughs> su su what difference does it make? Just choose not to get upset. And that's why God gives us the power of choice. But it's hard when somebody cuts you off and you're in a hurry or something. And, um, you know, I was going to work one day and somebody who works with me said, you cut me off and then you you wouldn't even let me back in. <laughs> no, I didn't. And so it all comes down to that God has given us the ability to choose our behavior and choose our responses and make a determination by using our imagination to say, what if that were me? What if that were me? Could I then, instead of judging that they were a bad person, can I say, oh man, they must have a really... So Jack, next time you get that happen, say, oh, they must have really... Maybe they had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe they had to... Uh, I had a little kid. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to do the rest of my share class at church, and I'll, I'll give you the whole story. It's good. <laughs> Anybody uh, else? What have you taken away from this? I just think it's a good reminder. A good reminder, something we forget. You know, we get wrapped up in what we're doing, and we're not thinking of the other person. I think we need to do more of that. I do. I'll let's. I'll turn it inside. Yes, I do. I need to think more about the other person and less about myself. Yeah. Less self-righteousness and mm -hmm. more empathy. Mm -hmm. that, that's another takeaway. All right, one more, and then we need to probably have prayer. I think that what I take out of this is uh, you have to remember one day will be your turn. So the mm -hmm. same way that you judge others, it might be the same way that it comes to you. So it is it is um very important that we we pray 
that the Holy Spirit can put the white words in our mouths. So when we try to correct someone or to judge someone, because um, today might be your turn to judge and tomorrow will be the other person turn to judge. So, and you might be the, um, the defender. So, um, so therefore we have to really be um, pray for about that and ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Like you say, it's not easy because yeah. the human some them always try to, take you know, to, to take over. So we have to really be mindful of the other side of the story. Absolutely. So Jack, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to end with this question to you. Have you ever cut off anybody? I did one time accidentally. Once? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> and I felt like crawling in a hole. Once? I, I don't believe that was only once. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only one I remember. <laughs> Why so, did you ask Carol? Ask Carol. What, what, mm -hmm. if you <laughs> so, so she was right. Our turn, our turn is coming. Yes. And the same thing that we're judging somebody else for. Oh, yeah. We're going to get judgment for, for doing the same thing. <laughs> well, th this has been interesting. And I, there's a lot of good stuff. I, I hope you, we can get to get to the, to the rest of the video next time. Yes. But uh, who is on our prayer list that um, uh, we need to pray for? Well, Ellie and... Um, and Maynard, yeah. Maynard were on our prayer list. How are you two doing? Well, I'm doing better. He's not here because he went to bed early. He wasn't feeling well. His back has just really given him fits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's a, I, what was the kind of fracture that you said? I read it in the email. Compound, compound fracture. A comp, that means it was broken in two Compre places? Compression. compression. Oh, compression I'm sorry, fracture. compression fracture. What does that mean? Uh, bone or bone. The vertebrae. Bone on bone. It's when your vertebrae gets the bone on bone there. Right. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the pad, yeah. the, the cushion there, because of the pressure that was put on it, I think he says there's at least three that are protruding right. from vertebrae. And that's, okay. that's horrible. That hurts. Yeah, that hurts bad. That's very bad. Do we know how many people that the church was able to help uh, clean up their um, their yards or whatever help they needed? Do we have a, a number of the, uh, on that? I believe there were four or five households that Good. they they were able to help. Good. Yes. There, there were some told more. Me they spent three hours on one house alone. Mm -hmm. There uh, were some more, but then when they went there, the people weren't home. And so they decided they better not work on it. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Well, yeah. somebody showed up at my house Sunday. Jose came to help me and my my boys and my grandboys and my my sons, oh. which was a real blessing. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. I was so worn out. Friday, Chris and I were out there all day, mm -hmm. and um, we're too old to be doing. <laughs> We were knocked yeah. out for the rest of the weekend, and then Sunday, you know, we finished up. And but Forest Lake sent students to some places too. That's and, good. Uh, yeah, they 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 were able to do some community service. And I see there's some other. So Ellie is on there. Um, Gustavo, how is he? I she haven't goes. heard. That shingles. Carl yeah, he has shingles. He was in the hospital with shingles. Uh -huh. I haven't heard how he's doing. Charles Locke was yeah, in the Charles Locke. I just saw that about Charles. Is 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 he home? I I don't sure. think so. Okay. I think he said, was, wasn't gonna have to have surgery. That was the main thing. He's there for observation more than anything. Be sure. Okay. All right. Well, listen, this was um, an interesting discussion. We'll get through it one of these days. But uh, uh, any other requests? Any unspoken? I have some unspoken requests. And uh, um, there's some, a minister who just was diagnosed with uh, liver cancer. Oh, and, and it's already spread. A young man, too, which oh. is really, 
really, um, really sad. And uh, the people that on my prayer list that we were praying for um, are, are doing better. Uh, but when, you know, liver cancer is hard to overcome. Yes, it is. And so keep, keep them in, in prayer. The young man, I don't know if he's gotten one, but uh, one of the pastors we were working with said his brother needed a kidney. Oh. And, um, I, I haven't been able to call him to see whether or not they had resolved that or not, but he was on a list, a long list of, uh, of people who need help. So let, let's bow our heads. Any other requests for prayer before we close? The people that have been affected by the hurricane, especially oh, in South yeah. Florida. Absolutely. My wife he says, are you all praying for the people that are hurt? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. A lot of, a lot of people. A lot hurt. of people that hurt. So let's, let, let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for the discussion that we've had tonight, the insights that we have learned from listening to each other, the stories that were shared, the, the, the word that was shared in a light that we may have never seen it before. And we just ask you, Lord, to, to help us to understand how important it is not to be judgmental of others, not to judge others, but to love others, to show empathy to others, and to be uh, the way you would have us to be, to treat others the way you would have us treat them. There's so many people with, uh, who are suffering right now. The people on our prayer list, Lord, we pray that you will continue to remember them and respond according to your will for each 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 person. Be with Maynard, especially tonight. He was not able to be on our call because he's not feeling well. We pray that his back issues can be resolved. And, and Ellie, thank you for giving uh, her a better experience today. And the others that are on our list, uh, like Gustavo and, and Charles, we thank you, Lord, for, for blessing us through this storm it was a, a bad storm. And I've heard today that we probably lost more lives in Florida today uh, on this storm than any other storm. And there are many people, especially in South Florida, that have lost their family members, um, their homes. And we pray, Lord, that they will be comforted by the power of your Holy Spirit. And help us, Lord, as, as we work in our community to be willing to do things to help others who are suffering and struggling. Thank you for blessing us, blessing our church. You know our individual needs, our family needs, our church needs, our building project, all of these things, Lord, we leave in your hands. Thank you for this group that's on tonight, and thank you for those who couldn't be with us, and we look forward to spending more time together next week. These blessings we do ask in thy son's name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Hey, welcome back, Betty. You, thank did, you. Are you back? Are you I'm back. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kirk, everybody good? Everybody's good. Yeah, just uh, got some ice on my back from picking up tree limbs in the yard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like the rest of you. It's, uh, we're getting right, old. Bob, I, I didn't hear Bob say anything. Bob, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. Good. Thank All right. Everybody have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Bye. man. Bye. Thank you.